So hurricane season, which is what we're in right now, is the perfect time for this video because Meridians have a love-hate relationship with hurricane season. Uh -huh. Because we love, we love, thank you for the rain because it brings the temperatures drastically down. April and May is the hottest. Triple digits are not fun to live in, but then the rain comes and the temperatures go away. Now we're in low 90s, high 80s, and then it becomes beautiful at night. So we love hurricane season, but we hate hurricane season because that's when the mosquitoes come out because it's perfect weather, it's perfect humidity for the mosquitoes, and so love-hate relationship. And so all that is great because I've collected 12 YouTubers, 13 including myself, who are going to share with you the 13 things we don't like about Merida, Mexico. Now I do want a caveat, I do want a caveat. Love-hate, right? Much, much more love then there will ever be hate for this area. And in fact, most of the YouTubers that I'm showcasing today are still in Merida with no plans of leaving. But some of us are leaving and or have left, but not because we don't like Merida. It's because we're travelers. And that's what travelers do is we move. And the reason why I'm highlighting these 13 YouTubers is because we try to keep it real. We try to interweave some of the things we don't like about a location that we're staying in by only telling you the positives. And so today, we're gonna indulge in our privilege for just a moment and complain a little bit about Merida, Mexico. And so who are the 12 YouTubers I've invited to my channel? We're gonna make this a game. Can you guess the YouTuber based on their voice. So comment below which YouTuber you think belongs to which complaint. Let's start. We're also here to figure out whether we can handle the heat. We're hoping not to <laughs> melt the month that we're here in Merida. So we came purposely during the month of April and May to make sure that we can handle this heat. And the heat so far has been easily every day 100 degrees up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So, so far we haven't melted, um, but we'll see. How hot is it? Oh my god, it's 100 degrees, feels like 109. Ready to see what it looks like underneath this face mask? How do I look? <laughs> Holy crap, this is, this is from walking around downtown for an hour, so granted this isn't an everyday thing, but oh my god, sweat stash all day, every day. Sweat stash. Let's jump right into the obvious. It gets hot here in Merida, and this couple purposely came during the hottest month, during April and May, because they wanna see how it's done. I did the opposite. Alex and I came in November because we would get to enjoy Merida without the heat, guys, in November. And we came two days before Thanksgiving. Like, we were at the end of November that we came to Merida and we were dying. We were dying, we were dying, we were dying. And by the time summer came, I think we were a little more acclimated to where summer didn't feel that bad. So just saying, that was our method. I, when I say summer isn't that bad, I'm just saying we didn't literally die. We're sweaty everywhere we went, we were seeking shade. And you're gonna hear a lot of Merida YouTubers say this, that when we're walking downtown or really anywhere, we're we're seeking the shade. We're crossing the street to the side we don't want to be on just to avoid two minutes of walking in the sun, knowing we have to come right back because we were already on the side of the road we need to be on. Like that's, we're, we're just constantly seeking shade all the time. So the next location we're going to will not be this hot. Things that I wish I knew prior to renting the first place um, could have actually saved me like a little heartache and some cash that I lost but I wanted to share the information with you, so hopefully this does help you out. All right, so I've only done Airbnb here. A lot of people, they do Airbnb for a short period of time and they move into a rental and it's just, it's not as easy. It's not as easy as maybe you think it is. And so two things, one, Alex and I got evicted from our first Airbnb. Evicted, not through any fault of our own. We've got a video, you can go watch it, but we got evicted. And so there are negative things that can happen in an Airbnb. I know lots of people who come here and they hate their Airbnb, which is sometimes why they are so eagerly seeking a lease. They want their lease, they want an apartment that they love. And so they seek it very quickly because they're like, they hate their Airbnb. So please know that's a thing. I did not hate my first Airbnb, but there were definitely things I didn't like. But at the end of the day, I was willing to stay there until we got evicted. <laughs> so we found this place. We're much happier here. We do miss the pool. We miss the pool every single day. The pool. 
Alex misses the pool too. And hopefully you guys have already seen my video with Barbie from Merida Moves. She is definitely, definitely somebody that can help you find your next home because it's not always as easy as it might look on YouTube. So yes, the peso dropped significantly in value, which now makes my rent around 800 a month. It definitely can go back up in value, which would make it around a thousand. And that is a lot here in Merida. Okay, so facts. Currency exchange rate, no matter what country you're in, changes every single day, every single day. I do not have like a magic eight ball or anything that lets me know when is the best time to get money out of the ATM or to go make a large purchase. Like I, I just don't know when that is. I also don't stare at the currency exchange rate, but man, especially for large purchases, such as your rent, your bank statement will most certainly notice when the dollar is strong versus when it is weak. Buying a 20 peso item, I, I almost don't care what the currency exchange rate is. I, we're good, right? We can afford it, it's no big deal. But my rent is 9,100 pesos. I often say that it's less than 450 US dollars, but right now it's actually 457. It's slightly more than 450. I think it's been as low as, I don't know, 420 or something. And now it's 457.94. And so my point is just that the strength of the dollar compared to the peso changes all the time. And so with my friend, she was renting a home for 20,000 pesos. Again, that's more than double what I'm paying. And so she's noticing the fluctuation, right? Initially, her rent was $1,100, then it went down to $800, which she loved. And now it's probably back up to close to $1,100 again, because that's, that's how it is. So your, your rent or anything that you pay on a monthly basis with pesos, it's, it's going to fluctuate every month, which can get a little bit annoying for the budget. So it is important if you do have, especially a strict budget, to kind of estimate over right buffer it up i budget 500 us dollars for my rent knowing that it's unlikely to actually hit 500 dollars, but like you just never know you never ever know have you been inside some of these expat groups it is downright scary let me show you how to navigate the shark infested waters of expat groups so that you don't get bitten yes yeah, like say it louder for the people in the back, expat groups can be the, the worst. And sometimes it is so tempting to just leave them all. To just be like, you know what, forget this. I don't need this group that badly, I'm just leaving. So at the end of this video, I will be revealing where these clips belong, right? Like who said these clips? And this is a video, if you haven't seen it, you need to watch because she's keeping it real. She's letting you know maybe why you shouldn't leave those groups. You have to watch her video to know all of it, but my point is, yes, expat groups can be vicious. You're just asking a simple question and then you get 20 people attacking you and attacking each other in the group because I, I think some expats, they leave the US just to have more space to argue. The keyboard warriors are alive and well and I have a suspicion, I really do, that some of these expats aren't actually in Merida or Mexico or whatever the location is. They're just in the groups just to argue with you, just for the fun of it. But watch her video. She's got a lot of travel experience and specifically experience dealing with other expats because a lot of my travel experience was military related. I never, 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 never joined a Facebook group based on a location until I retired two years ago. And so, Anyway, watch her video. Very, very helpful. She keeps it real. Le Seca. Le Seca is back, money. It's back. Prohibition. Ain't no, lip, ain't no alcohol here. 45 days. I think we're actually in La Seca right now. I think we, I think currently we're not allowed to buy liquor. I'm honestly not 100% sure. I personally have not bought alcohol since before COVID started. And as a single mom traveler, I honestly tend not to drink that often. However, I like the option too. And since COVID began, we have had in Merida, Mexico, so many times where we went into dry law. Now, especially in the beginning, it definitely was done to protect the citizens. They didn't want anyone who was suffering from loss of income, loss of whatever, to resort to drinking, thereby increasing the chance of domestic violence. So this was definitely the state of Yucatan doing its best to protect its citizens. Absolutely. So I'm not at all saying that it's a bad thing, but just be aware. If you are someone that needs to drink or wants to have a drink, 
every single day, it, that, it's a challenge. It can be a challenge here in Merida, Mexico. And while all of these complaints, by the way, are talking about Merida in particular, they also apply to a lot of Mexico. However, the very specific reason why I'm not calling this 13 things we don't like about Mexico is because some of these things don't apply. There are areas of Mexico that don't have dry laws popping up very frequently, if ever. But anyway, it's not something that really affects me on a personal basis, but we, we've we gone dry several times since the beginning of 2020. I'm using my hotspot right now because right now I'm dealing with the blackout and um, this blackout has been going on since 12 o'clock. And... Um, Hopefully I don't get nobody that try to come for me, but your girl is tired of the blackouts. Okay. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of the blackouts. Um, I work from home. And so for me, with these blackouts happening all the time, that's messing with my money. And what I don't like is I don't like when my money being messed with. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Now I will say the blackouts seem to happen most frequently during hurricane season. Like literally now is the time. But let me tell you, she is one of two YouTubers that I know of that's ever talked about it. And I say this knowing that I've experienced it. Like there have been times where Alex and I have gone out to restaurants just because we were tired of not having electricity in the house or sometimes not having internet because we do also have internet blackouts. Loss of power is absolutely a thing. Now where I am right now, we've had maybe two or three bigger ones. We've had one terrible one. At, like to the point where at the end of it, we left. Like I, there's a video, there's a video called Staycation in Merida or something like that. Anyway, that staycation inspired by a blackout that lasted, I think it was three days. We lasted about two days of it. And I was so glad to find somewhere else to go. It also had a pool, so there were other benefits, but like I was very glad. It turned out to be one of the worst vacations we've ever had. But my point is, we were seeking power. Power and some pool, because when you lose power, you lose AC, which means you really, really want a pool. So we, we left, we left. We've had other days where it was out maybe 20 hours, uh, again, probably three times my entire Merida stay. If you watch her video, it sounds like she's got it so much worse in her area. She's somewhere further north. Blackouts are absolutely a thing, and I'm pretty sure it'll be a thing in my next location. And it's one of those things where during the blackout, I am thinking to myself, I should record this. Like, this is a thing that happens frequently enough that people should know about it. But then on the flip side, I'm trying to save power, save battery life on my phone. So I don't really want to record too much because what if I need to do something, like actually do something, actually order food? What if I decide that I need an Uber? What if I decide to run away and I need to get on Airbnb? Like, like those thoughts occur to me. And so I've never recorded during the blackout. And then once the blackout is over, guys, I'm just so happy. Like Alex and I literally just turned the AC on and we're just laying in the AC so happy that all thoughts, all thoughts of our previous pain disappear. And so yeah, I've never recorded a blackout. Um, so when I saw this video, I was like, oh yes, somebody who actually recorded it. And um, yeah, so keeping it real. Thank you so much because I always forget. It's like going into labor. I don't remember how painful labor was because I just remember the gorgeous kid I got. The plumbing system here in Mexico is just a little bit different than what our houses are like in the United States. Now in his video, he's not talking about the flushing toilet paper issue. He's talking about the water pressure. He's talking about the sediment that's in the water. So I'm constantly cleaning my shower head to try to maintain the water pressure. So my home does have pretty decent water pressure. However, the sediment thing is real. You have to constantly clean the shower head to maintain it. So it's a thing for sure water pressure i've been around a few areas and like i've seen that pretty much like the whole state everyone's wearing a mask and again this might be important to, this is important to everybody some people want to live in an area where everyone's wearing a mask and, and some people want to live in an area where no one is wearing a mask and going through all those protocols yes yeah, so i will say this merida in particular i think we're doing a really great job every building i enter whether it's a store or a bank or i just 
everywhere. They take my temperature, they give me some kind of hand sanitizer. Um, sometimes they'll spray my entire body, which I don't really appreciate, but nonetheless, like they, they go all out. Everyone is wearing masks here. It's a huge thing. It is not a federal law and it's not a Yucatecan law. It's not a Yucatecan law, but what the Yucatec does, our state, is essentially they get health officials to say, you have to do this. You have to, not because it's illegal not to, but because for health reasons, you have to. So there is this strong pool, and I would say 99 to 100, like everyone's wearing a mask. Just everyone's wearing a mask. However, in other parts of Mexico, some places literally, they don't wear a mask at all. So we'll see, we'll see how our next location is. I will say most Mexico YouTubers right now, they're gonna wear a mask no matter what. Like when they're in public, you're gonna see that they're pulling down a mask. You're, like they're going to wear a mask and I'm pretty confident Alex and I are going to continue wearing a mask because there's a level of responsibility of showing you how to be polite to the area, I guess, if that makes sense. But it doesn't mean the locals are. It doesn't necessarily mean the locals are gonna be wearing their masks. And so this is where, if you want to know, do we have to wear masks? Don't necessarily just look at the YouTuber that is talking look at the background if they're outside somewhere look at the people walking around are they wearing a mask and I'm, and merida like 99 percent of the locals are wearing a mask every day all the time everywhere i have to share the story because i'm so grossed the f out so i go outside on my patio and i just see like little it looks like little bugs um, so I go outside to investigate further, and because I don't see well, I kneel down and I'm like, what the f is that? It was, and it was just like, like a sea of like these little, little, tiny black bugs or whatever. And when I say a sea, I mean a sea because when I got closer, it was like clear liquid on top of the bugs, okay? Which turned out to be, okay. I have to stop it there, but so bugs. Bugs are a thing. Most of us, I think we're just, we're used to the bugs. We don't necessarily comment on it very often because it just, it happens a lot. I will say in my home, I have ants relatively frequently, not, not like a, you know, not covered, but I definitely have ants and we have geckos. Although I haven't seen the gecko in a while. Alex, have you seen the gecko in a while? We haven't seen them in a while. We have ants outside of my home. Cockroaches, not a lot, not a lot. But we have seen cockroaches, which might mean that they are in the house and maybe I just don't see them because they don't come out when I'm walking around. That could be a thing. But definitely lots of lizards. There are these scorpion spiders. I'll see if I can get a picture of it. It's apparently not an actual scorpion. It's a something, I don't know. I've never actually seen it myself, but lots of people have told me about seeing these scorpions. They do not harm you at all, but they eat all of the other bugs. And so it's one of those love-hate relationships where nobody likes these scorpions, but the scorpions eat all the other things we don't like, and therefore we just deal with it. Again, my home, never seen one. I think I would freak out, but the worst thing only happened to one person. They lived outside the pedophetical, outside the circle of Merida, look at these pictures, woke up to this gigantic snake crawling on her floor. She heard it. She heard something crawling on the floor, and this is what she saw. She called 911, which by the way is a thing. You can call 911 here. Nobody got hurt by the snake. They just got freaked out and posted it everywhere. I got a lot of friends. I got a lot, I got some homeboys back in Baltimore. I don't think they would like it here, man. They gonna be like, I'm bored out of my mind, right? And it's not because it's not stuff to do, but it's the kind of stuff to do that they like, right? I don't need to go into a lot of details on YouTube, but it's the actual stuff to do that they like to do. You guys know what young, eligible bachelors like to do. Okay. So I don't know exactly what he's talking about, but here's what I'm going to assume. We do not have necessarily a happening nightlife. So it is a much more relaxed sort of partying. He implies this in the rest of his video, which you should watch, that Meredith's kind of a, a sleepy town. We're definitely a family friendly town. 
We are a, like just, that's yes. If you like cenotes and ruins, architecture, if you like, you know, you could take in foods and the people here are amazingly friendly. Those are the things you come to Merida for. We're not Tulum. We're not Playa del Carmen. We're not Cancun. We're not Mexico City. We're not Guadalajara. We're Merida. It's different. Not all of Mexico is the same. And not everyone likes to be in a place that's family friendly. And Google and Yelp are not reliable here. They just do not have everything that you need. The biggest thing is word of mouth. And Facebook. A lot of businesses will do listings there and they'll put up their menu and then you can order through WhatsApp. Yes. So yeah, especially when we first got here, we like, if you tell me about a, a great restaurant, but you also say, I don't know the hours, they're open, I'm gonna Google it. Like that I'm gonna say, oh, what's the name of the restaurant? Let me look it up. Depending on the type of restaurant or location, I might never find it on Google, but more than likely the hours displayed on Google, it's probably wrong, it's probably wrong. If you have a Facebook page, even the hours on the Facebook page might be wrong, but you can message the owner on Facebook or better yet, like dramatically better yet, if you can get their number, their WhatsApp number, you can text them and you're gonna get the best results through WhatsApp slash word of mouth. This is not a place that cares about updating websites and so it's not, friendly for those of us who are huge on Google. And even though they have a Facebook page that they probably occasionally check, yeah, some of them are not checking their Facebook messages. This is definitely a WhatsApp society where people are texting actual phone numbers and not through Facebook quite as often. So yeah, it's hit or miss. It's hit or miss on Google. It's hit or miss on Facebook. You need the WhatsApp or you just need to walk over there. I used this YouTuber's video twice because I couldn't find anyone else that said what she's about to say, so. You cannot trust the menu. The menu is not very specific. I think a lot of people just assume that you know what chilaquiles are, and a lot of the dishes here in the Yucatan have very specific names. Some of them are Mayan names. If you're a tourist, you might not know what's in the dish, and the menu will not necessarily explain to you what it has in it. It might be general. I think I mentioned it in one of my early, early Mexico videos, I think I called it like, what do you do with a picky eater? So there have been many times where I've gone to a restaurant and I've asked, what's in this sandwich? And I'll have somebody go, ham and cheese. And I'm like, solo, just only ham and cheese, solo jamón y queso? And they're like, yes, that's it. That's, that's all they have on the sandwich. And then it comes with not only the condiments, but sometimes lettuce and tomato. And it, like, like it comes with a lot of ingredients that they're just not thinking of. All they know is they have this amazingly delicious ham and cheese sandwich. You're gonna love it. And here you go. They're definitely not thinking in terms of Perhaps they have a vegan in front of them and they're not really thinking in terms of allergies. Now, we are not vegetarian, we're not vegan. So in terms of medically speaking, we really only care, does it have peanuts in it? Those are usually pretty easy to determine. Like Alex, there are so many condiments that he's really just not a fan of. When getting like a sandwich, he much prefers to go to Subway where you are building your own sandwich, you're telling them what to put on it, as opposed to going to a place that has sandwiches to sell because sometimes they come with other ingredients. Now that being said, now that we've been here a couple of years, we, we can kind of predict what might be in most of these products because we've just experienced so much, especially the first maybe six months of being here. There were so many times where I would order extra food knowing that something, something in this my son won't eat. Let me order a couple things because maybe between these three dishes, I can find enough food for Alex to eat. So that was a thing. If you've got a picky eater in your family, this, it's gonna drive you nuts. If you are very specific in your diet, such as being a vegan, but again, same thing. It, it can be difficult for picky eaters here. I'm sweating out so much, still. Sweating. It's hot. It is so hot. It's, it's so hot. Okay, I had to throw that one in there because it's, it's June and it's hot and because of the rain, it's muggy. Again, it's not as hot as it was last month, so I am grateful, but now I've got muggy, I've got mosquitoes, and yeah. So before I reveal who all of the YouTubers were, number one, did you guess? Did you recognize any of the voices? Because I really think a lot of YouTubers have a very distinct voice, and I think you can tell. If you are a true Merida YouTube lover, you should know who the voices are. 
Okay, but the other thing I want to mention is one of the complaints that I hear about travel YouTubers, especially Mexico, because Mexico has this huge negative reputation in the US. And so I think a lot of people are really seeking out, like they wanna know the bad stuff. They wanna know what they're getting into. Number one, overall, and I, and I am speaking of Merida in particular because I just don't have enough experience on the rest of Mexico, but overall people love Merida. They love it, especially if it's their first time entering Mexico. It is safe, it does feel secure, it is friendly, it is super easy to blend in in this environment. Big picture, every day we wake up happy, we wake up glad to be here and not in another location. It is a pleasure to be in Mexico. So when it comes time to creating video, sometimes we're just excited about the things we're excited about. We're excited about the things we get to do or the lifestyle or how calm it is or the, like, and so yes, a lot of our videos definitely tend to lean on the side of we love Mexico because we love Mexico. It's a thing and kind of similar to what I was saying about the blackouts, when things are bad, we're just dealing with it. We're just suffering through it. We're figuring it out. And once it's over, we're not living in the past anymore. We're not staying, like we're not sitting there being angry at the fact that we lost power two days ago and then we can make a video about it. Like we've, we've moved on, we've moved on from the negative moments. We think it's funny now. Like it's that it's a thing that naturally happens. And so we tend to make videos of the present moment of the fun, of the thing that we're doing, and, and I apologize. We do try to keep it real, but it's just, we know more good things about Mexico than negative things. The other thing is, remember the earlier video about the expat Facebook groups? Traveling is difficult. I know, we're not supposed to say that. There's a reason why you might be intimidated by the idea of traveling, and it's because the, it's difficult. It's unpredictable. You are going into territory, you're going into places where they have different cultures, different belief systems, different ways of doing things, different hand gestures. There are countries where this means no and this means yes. I use so many hand gestures in Mexico. I'm so grateful, so grateful. A lot of our expressions, a lot of our hand gestures are very similar between the US and Mexico, like super grateful. But there are countries where that's not the case. So, so traveling, is difficult, just know this. For those of us who have traveled our entire lives or extensively in general, there is an element of tough it out. There's an element of, you know, not complaining about the new environment because you're traveling on purpose. Like most of us are traveling because we want to travel, because we choose this life. We are privileged in this ability to leave our country, to leave our, sometimes the hemisphere of where we were raised and to, and to see the world. Like this is a huge, huge privilege and we're choosing to do this. And so there is this psychological element of don't complain about it. Don't complain about it. Don't complain. Merida is hot. Duh. Duh. You can see it on the map. Of course it's hot. It's a tropical area. It's literally a jungle. Like, like that, there's an element of that. And so for those of us who travel full time, sometimes we don't want to complain about it. We just don't. We just don't want to complain. We know we sound ridiculous. We know we sound privileged. We know we sound entitled and and we don't want to sound that way. So we don't like to complain about it. It is important as you watch YouTubers, wherever you watch, people who are traveling all the time, you have to pay attention. You have to pay attention to those moments. A lot of these clips that you heard today, they were on videos where they talked about how much they love Merida. They love Merida, but they're just trying to keep it real and letting you know just a little bit, just a little snippet of things that drive them nuts. It's not a negative reflection of the country or the city, it's just, a thing that we're complaining about because there's no such thing as utopia. I am confident wherever you live, you can come up with a list of 50 things, 50 little annoying things that drive you nuts, but it might even combined not be enough to make you want to leave the town that you're living in. So that's the case. We don't want to complain about something that we're maybe not going to do anything about. Like Merida's hot and yet I stay month after month after month. I mean, we are leaving soon, but We've stayed here almost two years in the heat. The big picture is it must not be that bad. I wouldn't have stayed if it was that bad. So now let's reveal 
the YouTuber. Clip number one, the couple who was talking about the extreme heat is Jenny and Kevin Eat Baila Travel. I actually only recently discovered them and they've got a lot of really useful videos. If you're thinking about traveling to Mexico and if you are pondering becoming a dual citizen, they are a great channel to follow. They're super informative. I am loving their channel. Number two, giving you insight on the do's and don'ts of renting here in Merida, Mexico is Heather Proctor from Unconventional Itinerary. I will give you some background info which is that Heather did not use Barbie. Barbie from Merida Moves. Just saying if you're gonna rent here you need to talk to Barbie. Her information is of course below. Number three giving us some insight on the peso to US dollar exchange rate is the amazing Amoya Shante, owner and founder of Single Moms Do Inner Circle. If you're a single mother this is something you need to really think about joining in the description. Number four, giving us the real talk about expat groups is Kelly McRae. She is phenomenal. She has been traveling for years and years and years all around the world and just has a lot of amazing insight. As a lupus warrior, she also has a lot of insight on the medical side of the house. So if you've got any kind of medical issues, even if it's not lupus in particular, she will shed the light on a lot of things. Number five, keeping it hilarious and real about La Seca is the Yar Bros. When I first started watching them, they were in Merida. They'd lived in Merida for what feels like forever. And now they are kind of traveling all around. I believe their home base is still in Guadalajara, but they're visiting a lot of different places in Mexico. So if you want to know about the different cities in Mexico, not just Merida, the Yar Bros are an amazing and hilarious channel that you should be following. And number six, keeping it absolutely real about the blackouts is Princess from The Princess Show. She also has lots of great videos about Merida and and again, she's just telling it like it is. We get blackouts, it's a thing. And number seven, talking about the plumbing situation is the amazing Monty from Mexit Plans. They actually started as a blog, mexitplans.com, and have recently really, really put a lot of effort into the YouTube channel. A huge and amazing resource for all things Merida slash Mexico. So Monty from Mexit Plans. Number eight is Jose Ortega Travels. Now, I love Jose. I probably watch all of his videos in the background because his videos do tend to be a little lengthy. He's just off the cuff, talking about things that you probably need to know. So it's a very different type of Merida channel. His videos are largely unedited, but sometimes not editing the video is the best way to really know the behind the scenes. And speaking of behind the scenes, did you know that I have a Patreon channel? I like to keep my videos relatively short and sweet on YouTube, and I try to stay relatively on point to the city slash country that I am in. I don't go off on too many tangents. However, in a place like Patreon, that's the place where I'm able to ramble a little bit more. It's the place where I can show you the behind the scenes. So if that is something that interests you, Patreon, join the family. Number nine with the Bugs story. First of all, you need to watch the rest of that video. Bugs are funny and finding lots of random bugs at your house is funnier. And, and then the little sacks on top of the, like, I, hilarious. You need to watch her. You need to be subscribed to her channel. Number 10 is the amazing SPK lifestyle. And one of the things I've always loved about his channel is he keeps it real, but he also, he digs a little bit deeper into the culture, into the psychology of travel life, especially if you're a solo traveler. And even if you're not, even if you're a single mom traveler, if you have questions like, do you get lonely traveling? He's got an amazing video that covers that. He's talking from a solo traveler viewpoint. He's talking from a male viewpoint, but nonetheless, a lot of the things that he's talking about really does apply to us even if we're not male and traveling by ourselves. A lot of his topics really hits home. Highly recommend SPK lifestyle. Number 11, talking about Google as well as the vagueness of our menu is the amazing Karen Matamoros from Mom on a Journey. We have talked about her extensively on this channel because she is epic. I absolutely love traveling with this lady. I consider myself very observant. I think I observe and I watch and I notice a lot of things when I travel. But where I sometimes assume, based on the things I'm observing, based on my personal experiences, Karen's like, yeah, why don't we just ask? Why don't we just ask? Karen is constantly, constantly asking the locals all these questions because she doesn't want to assume. She doesn't want to be like, I think it's because this is the culture. She wants to be like, no, they told me. I asked them these 20 questions and they told me these things. When she goes somewhere, she's really digging into what's really going on. And so I love traveling with her. And last but not least, I had to throw another one in guys because it's hot. 
I'm hot. And so coming in at number 12, Eternal Expat. She is not a Merida resident. However, she's definitely come here multiple times. So again, if you're interested in different parts of Mexico, she is another great channel to follow because she has been to a lot of places. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed all of the complaints we had about Merida. Please keep in mind that whether we choose to stay here or move on to other locations, Merida has left an amazingly positive impression on all of us. It's like the two of us are going